I'm making a robotic arm and in this video I'm gonna add some pretty cool upgrades including inverse kinematics and also some other stuff. Peachy. This is the robotic arm. It has four motors, one for the base, these two and the last one is for the gripper. Before I was controlling the motor angles and now with the inverse kinematics I want to control the spatial position so X, Y, Z and also the gripper angle. That way I can tell the arm to move somewhere and it will calculate the motor angles for me. The function that does this is called inverse kinematics. It's kind of boring to solve, I've already done that. So I'm gonna try to speedrun this and solve it in one minute. We know the coordinates of the gripper because that's the input and we also know the angle. From this we can easily calculate this point. Then we have just a simple RR manipulator, so we can draw this triangle and use cosine law to get these two angles. Theta 3 is just 180 minus alpha 3. We can use cosine law again, we need this angle. And to get theta 2, we just add these two angles up. Now we need theta 4 angle, this is just gonna be the negative of theta 2 plus theta 3, so we get the zero angle and then we add gamma 4. This linkage from the top is just a straight line. We can calculate theta 1 easily. Now we just need to make a single correction. If theta 1 isn't 0, this is going to be rotated and we need to assume that x is longer. We need to use this length xl instead of x. And if we plug this into our previous equations, it's all going to work out. Now we got our Ilvan equations and the inverse kinematics have been solved. As you can see, solving the inverse kinematics analytically isn't that much fun. And if this wasn't a simple language, this would be an absolute nightmare. I've originally wanted to use a numerical solution with Jacobian, which would be quite interesting. But when I, I was going through the math, I, I'm not sure if the Arduino Nano would be able to compute all of this in a reasonable time. When you do anything like this that is remotely complicated, it never works. So instead of just transferring it straight to the real robot, to the Arduino, I wrote this Python script, which calculates the inverse kinematics and iterates the gripper angle. So this red dot, that's the base of the robot. And this blue dot that looks like it's not moving, that's the gripper. I set the desired x, y and z position and I'm iterating the gripper angle to get this nice animation. I think it looks pretty cool and I can't wait to see this on the real robot. Also, to plot this out, you actually need forward kinematics function, which I wrote from the top of my head, because it's quite easy, and that's why it took me three tries before I got it right. So this script didn't take that much time, and it saved me a lot of time because debugging this on the real robot would be a huge pain. By the way, if you find this interesting and you want to support the channel, you can download the project files from my Patreon. I've been modeling this assembly for two days. I'm just gonna quickly go through the parts and show you what I've done. All of the models are parametric. So I have a bunch of parameters for this model and I can change the dimensions anytime I want. So I can, for example, make the legs longer and you can see that it instantly updates. It takes longer time to model but then if you want to change something, you don't have to remodel anything. You just change a single number and it updates. So this is what the controller looks like. If you look under the cover, there's the PCB. It gets bolted down with four bolts. And from the bottom, it has this part, which slides into the electronics box. So this is the box for the electronics. If we look inside, there's the PCB. There's the buck converter and the battery. I've added a lot of holes. For example, this is for coding the Arduino. This is for the servo cables, I think. This is for a switch. And the cable from the controller is gonna be up here, going into the controller. So you can just hold the controller like this and control the robotic arm. Or if you want to, you can take the controller out and you can hold it anywhere you want. I mean within the length of this cable. I'm also gonna need to make another box for the pneumatics, but that will be in a future video. 
yeah that's pretty cool i've already printed all the parts and now i'm gonna assemble them this video is sponsored by pcbway if you haven't seen my previous videos i've basically put all of the electronics into these two pcbs learning to design them wasn't hard at all and it was also super cheap if you use pcbway you get 10 pcbs for five dollars and if it's your first time using them you can click the link in the description and you will get a five dollar discount for your first order they also do manufacturing stuff like CNC machining, injection molding and 3D printing. So if you want to step up your projects, you can check them out. It's the next day, I've got all the parts printed. First I'm gonna assemble the electronics box and then the controller. And then this piece which connects them together. I hope everything will be okay. I know of one mistake, which is this box. I bought these super small hinges and they should fit onto the box. When I was printing the bottom of this electronics box, I've noticed that these holes are missing and I was like, what the fuck? I remember modeling them and it's because of this timeline. So Fusion 360 has this timeline of features so you can go back in time and kind of see what features you've added. And for some fucking reason, I had this marker about here and at this time I haven't modeled the holes in yet. And wherever you have the marker, if you save the part as an STL file, it's gonna be saved without these features. Lesson learned, and I'm not gonna reprint this. It would take too much time. I'm just gonna drill the holes in. I hope I got a drill bit for that. This has a lot of holes for cables, but even then I forgot to add cables for the pneumatics. So I'm probably gonna like drill new holes or just use the holes that are for the servo cables. By the way, this bolt organizer is the most useful thing I've printed. I use this every single day. I got about a million of these soldering iron tips and I always forgot to change them when I'm putting the heat set inserts in. This is too thin, it goes all the way through and then I end up making holes in my 3D prints. So this is for the electronics PCB. Before I put that in I need to drill the holes I talked about for the hinges. So I'm going to put this top cover on it which has the holes in it. I'm gonna put the hinges into that and use them as a guide to drill the holes in this part. These hinges cost about 50 cents or something for 10 of them, so this was a great investment. The button is gonna be attached from the outside, so I need to unscrew these bolts. Sick. Now I just need to attach the PCB. converter this is for the battery yeah I also need to screw in the switch for the battery there's a hole for charging it instead of just using this rainbow cable I've put it inside this black one which changes the diameter as you change the length and to prevent it from looking like this I've made this clamp it just screws into this small plastic hole and it clamps the cable I can lock the box with this bolt, it's like a key, if you don't have screwdriver you're not getting in. Okay, this looks pretty sick, and if I flip the switch, nice. Let's do the controller now. Huh? 
I've designed this so when you put the top of the controller on it squeezes this cable so even if you yank on it it shouldn't disconnect So this is the electronics box finished. The robotic arm is gonna sit behind it. You can control it and if you want to, you can take the controller out and control it from any place you want. You can open it anytime and you got access to all of the components. I'm also gonna do one last thing. Never mind, this looks fucking awful. I've spent about three hours soldering these cables. It's just to extend the servo cables. So I'm going to connect them to the main PCB and then we can test out the inverse kinematics of this robotic arm. I hope I've connected it well. Yeah, that looks good. I added the inverse kinematic function to my Arduino code and now we can check out the inverse kinematics. Right now the XYZ position is constant and I'm changing the Kuiper angle. Okay, then the vertical axis. This is past the max angle of this motor, so it can't reach straight down. Yeah, this is better. Then left to right. Fuck. And this is what happens when you overreach the max position. This is just a prototype by the way. The next step is to test out the pneumatics. I've already made the gripper, so that's gonna be in the next video. If you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon and see you next time.